Hello, and welcome to Morfolio Trace. In this video, we'll look at how to work with layers. We'll look at how to use your layer toolbar, how to set active layers, how to work with your paper and drawings opacity, how to change layer blending, working with text layers and adding text, working with your layer settings, copying layers, moving layers, and the all new paper backgrounds that are now in Trace. Let's get started. So as you can see, we're in a project here by David Drazil, a really beautiful interior sketch perspective of a project by Sarah Sham of SHE's Atelier. On the right hand side is your layer toolbar. At the top is a button for adding layers, adding images from your cloud storage or your library. This could also be adding in PDFs and adding texts. Below that are all of your drawing layers. As you can see, they're all here. You can work with different layers to save different things and build up your drawing that way. If you press on any layer and hold, you can see that you can change the layers order. This can be really helpful if you want to move things around so they look a certain way and so things are overlapping the way that you want them to overlap. You can also hide layers by pressing the I. You can check out the layer actions, which allow all sorts of different things from changing the name of the layer, changing some opacities, changing the color and the paper blending, and all of these manipulations of the layers as well at the bottom. Let's take a look at setting your active layer. If you scroll down to the bottom, you can see that David has this layer here with all of his construction lines. If we double tap on the layer, we are now setting that layer as the active one. So we can continue to add lines and they will be on that layer that is below the other ones. And you can see when I drew that line, it went behind here because that is on a layer above. See that? Very cool. Now, if you don't have any active layer set, or if you've double tapped to turn off the active layer, you'll always be drawing on your topmost visible layer, just like a regular stack of trace paper. Let's take a look at the paper and drawing opacity as well. If we go back to our construction line layer, you can see that there are two sliders here, one for your paper opacity and one for your drawing opacity. If we change the paper opacity, you'll see that the yellow color comes in the background of the layers, but it's not changing the color of the lines that are drawn on top of that layer. Now let's say that we've finished this drawing up and we want these construction lines that are here to be visible, but we want them to fade into the background a little bit. If we slide the drawing opacity slider down, you can see that we can change the opacity of all the lines that are on that specific layer and help them fade into the background to make the presentation of this drawing really nice. Another thing that we can do is change the layer blending. You can see that in this drawing layer, David has added some really beautiful colors to the sofa and to the paintings on the wall. But what we're missing here, especially in the couch, are all of the line work that are underneath that define the contours of the couch. So what we can do is go into our layer actions and go to our paper blending and hit multiply. This will allow all of your black lines that are below that layer to become visible this is really helpful when you're adding fills and colors like David has done here to be able to show the line work that's underneath, but still be able to see and enjoy the vibrant colors that you're adding on top. The next thing that we'll look at is adding text. So we know that this drawing is by David and it's of a project by Essegy's Atelier, so maybe we'll give it a little title. Just hit the text icon there and then we'll type in David Drazil 
and we'll say whoop, no emoji. Go S uh, G's Atelier. So it's on two lines right now, but let's say we want it to just be on one. We can grab this yellow toggle there and pull our text line so that everything can fit nicely on one line. Now what I'll do is I'll go ahead and with my finger, pull that down to the bottom to move it in place. You can also change your font here. You could change your font color with all the palettes. You could change the font size to a specific size that you have in mind. And when you're ready, just hit done and your text will be added into your drawing. Now, one really cool feature about the layers as well, especially text layers, is if you double tap this one, you automatically will go into the edit mode. And you can see here my spacing is off, so let me add a space here and hit done. And now I've been able to edit my text just by double tapping on the layer. If you click on the layer actions for the text layer, you'll also see that you can get to the edit there. You can move and rotate it. You can delete, copy, duplicate, mirror this text layer. And you can also change the opacity if you don't want it to be so strong in your drawing. The next thing that we'll look at are a few layer settings. So one of them has to do with this drop shadow that you can see is around all of our layers. If you want that, it's great. Or if you don't, you can go to the wrench where your project settings are and turn off drop shadows. Now you can see that the drawing looks perfectly in tune with the background of the drawing space and you don't see any of those layer boundaries. Sometimes you want to see those boundaries though, so you can always toggle the layer drop shadows back on. One special note is that the drop shadows don't print, so even if you have them on in your drawing space, when you go to export your drawing later on, they will not show up. It's only when you're in your drawing space that they remain visible. Another thing to take note of is that all of David's layers here are perfectly stacked on top of one each other. The way to get that is if you go back to your project page and you hit the gear toolbar to access your app settings, you can scroll down and there's this option for stack layers. If we toggle that on, let's go back to this drawing by David and we'll go in and we'll go ahead and add a new layer. Now you can see when we turn on the opacity of this layer, it's perfectly aligned with the base of the layer, even though I'm zoomed out to a, a larger view of the drawing. Let's compare what happens now if we have stack layers turned off. Back to my settings, toggle off stack layers, and now I'm going to go back and I'll zoom in, I'll turn off this layer, and I'll add another one. And you can see that now this new layer, when I have stack layers turned off, is the full size of the area that I was zoomed to, not the size of the base layer. So this just depends how you like to work. Some people like to work with all of the layers remaining the same size. Others like to create new layers depending on the level of detail that you're working at, and that can be a great way to work as well. The last setting that we'll look at in your app settings that is pertaining to layers is your ability to set your default layer. So you can select between canary, yellow, buff for black, or white layers to be your default. Or if you hit none, whatever your layer settings are. So here we have none set. And if I add a layer and I change it to black with this much opacity, now you'll see when I zoom out and add a new layer, it's giving me the exact same settings as my last layer added. If I change this to a yellow, that's something like this, super opaque. And I add another layer, you'll see that it's keeping that same layer setting used as well. So that can be handy depending on how you like to work.
The next thing that we'll look at is copying layers between projects. So let's say that you really like this drawing layer here with all these colors, but you want to start a new drawing with it in a different project. What you can do is go down, hit copy, and now you'll see that that layer has appeared at the top of your layer toolbar. If you return to the project page and create a new blank project, you'll see that that layer has remained on top of your toolbar and now you can tap it and it will be inserted into your new project. You can resize it, you could rotate it if you desired, and then when you're ready, hit the check mark and it will be inserted into your drawing for you to create on top of or to continue to draw in a new project. This can be really helpful when you're working on plans and you want to transfer a certain idea, but you want to bring it onto a new project, onto a new drawing, you can do it that way. The next thing that we'll look at with layers is using this really beautiful drawing, plan drawing by Christian Ocampo. If we zoom in, you can see that this top layer is just a small layer that's been added on and it just has the bed. And one amazing thing about layers is that they are movable just like regular trace paper. So if we use three fingers and drag the three fingers around, you can see that we're actually able to move that layer, reposition it just using our three fingers, just like you would with a regular sheet of paper. Super cool and super helpful when designing plans especially, or if there's anything that you just wanna test out with different configurations. If you're working collaboratively, it can be really great to move things around and see how they might work in different positions. Once you have the layer set in place, maybe you don't want it to move anymore. So you can go to your layer actions and turn on your translation lock. Now, if I try to move that sheet again, you'll see that I get an error that says position locked, unlock layers panel to reposition. So now that we have it in place, it is not able to move. If we wanna move it again, we can hit translation lock and now the paper is free to move around again. Also, all of your layer actions that you do, including moving your layers around, are able to be redone or undone using the two and three finger tap. The last thing that we'll look at are new paper backgrounds that are available in the latest versions of Trace. Here's an amazing axon drawing by Jason Sheltrick and you can see the detail that Jason uses in this drawing and all of the lines that are drawn are aligned with the paper background. If we zoom in, you can see this beautiful texture and there's also a really nice light axonometric grid that's overlaid on top of it. This is the craft paper background and all of these can be accessed by going down to your base layer and if you hit change background, you'll see that there are these new options for craft paper, blueprint paper, and charcoal blueprint paper. All of them are really beautiful. There's different options to have blank, to have an orthographic grid, or an axon grid overlaid on top of your desired texture. So let's go back and take a look at another one of these projects. Here's one by Joshua Jones where you can see the really beautiful white line work against the blue to create this amazing texture. And here, Joshua has chosen the blank blueprint paper, and it just gives a really special feel to these drawings. In the latest version of Trace, you'll also find that we have introduced a black charcoal paper background and this drawing by Amin Zakaria has taken advantage of that. You can see there is the orthographic grid behind this drawing and with the light line work, it really gives an amazing texture and makes this drawing really beautiful and really special. So that's everything. Thanks so much for watching this video and I hope that you've learned a little bit more about how to work with layers in Mortfolio Trace. 
Thanks for watching and be sure to check out our other how-to videos.